sun cast a shadow A digital line Is coming over the mountain And over your mind Welcome to Once Upon a Coin, documenting the ongoing history of blockchain and cryptocurrency. As always, I'm your storyteller, Jason Cassidy. Today's story is one of intrigue, mystery, a lot of broken hearts, and some serious paydays for a select few that had the gumption to pull off the unthinkable. This is the story of crypto exchange hacks. This is probably one of the craziest stories I've ever told you on the show to date. <laughs> Even doing the research on this was fun as it brought back a lot of memories from the past on events that I had long forgotten about. And the truth is that there's been so many crypto exchange hacks in the past that it's become an accepted part of the culture here in cryptocurrency, albeit a rather unsavory one. And the criminals are keeping up with the times too. So for every improvement in crypto security and for all the education and awareness around best practices to keep coins safe, the hacks just keep on coming. We're gonna start our journey by first addressing what exactly a crypto exchange is and what it means to be hacked. Crypto exchanges are online businesses that facilitate customers buying and selling cryptocurrency, either for another crypto or for fiat. Fiat being a government issued currency like the US dollar. The vast majority of exchanges are centrally operated, which means there's a full staff of employees behind the scenes running things and thus the customers are trusting their money with the exchange. There's also another type of exchange that exists today, which is the decentralized format, also known as a DEX. DEXs allow customers to trade cryptocurrency through direct peer-to-peer -peer transactions without the need of an exchange operator acting as an intermediary. These exchanges are still relatively new and often have less features like the ability to deposit or withdraw fiat due to lack of KYC, also referred to as know your customer. So while they may be safer than centralized exchanges, DEXs are much less user-friendly and are thus used almost exclusively by experienced traders. You can think of a centralized exchange like a bank with teller services for their customers, while a DEX is more akin to stock traders on the floor making direct bets by themselves. Make sense? Good. So then a hack is when an individual or a group of people target an exchange in an attempt to steal the customer's money being held there. And because there's currently no legal names or identification attached to a crypto wallet address, at least not yet, once the coins are stolen and in the hands of a hacker, they're extremely difficult to regain. Once your money's gone, it's not likely ever coming back. Just how often do these hacks actually happen in crypto? Well, since 2011, we've got well over 50 documented high profile cases of crypto exchange hacks. Some of these have been perpetrated by unknown external assailants, while a few hacks have been suspiciously conducted in a manner that begs the question of whether it was an inside job. Also known as a self-hack, where someone internal to the exchange conducts the heist himself using information only they would have access to. Every exchange is a target for hackers, so exchanges need to be concerned of external and internal factors. Um, externally, someone could clone the exchange under a new website that encourages people to submit their, uh, their, their private login information or their, or their private keys. Uh, externally as well, exchanges could have phishing tactics where scammers share, uh, share links that download Trojan horse type software to, to their computer and opens up the exchange to be hacked from outside. Uh, also internally, exchanges need to be aware that their staff could, or the, you know, the co-founder could steal assets from, from the exchange and from users. So let's go back in time and revisit some of the most notorious digital currency heists in history. One of the first recorded crypto exchange hacks took place in June 2011 and involved the infamous Mt. Gox. What transpired here was just a taste of things to come for Mt. Gox when it came to hacking and customer losses. The hackers used stolen credentials with admin privileges to generate obscene amounts of unbacked Bitcoin out of thin air. 
They then sold the freshly minted fake Bitcoin at market price, driving the value down from 1750 US to just one penny. They then purchased the confused and panicked users real Bitcoin and withdrew them from the exchange before anything could be done. Reports on exactly how much Bitcoin was taken here vary widely, but the accepted number is somewhere around 2,500 Bitcoin. Keep in mind, back in 2011, Bitcoin and blockchain were poorly understood concepts. There was no law enforcement agency anywhere in the world that had deep blockchain forensic knowledge that the public could come to for help in this matter. This is probably a good time to mention the different options one has when it comes to safely storing cryptocurrency. A hot wallet is a wallet that's connected to the internet making it a much easier target for hackers. And conversely, a cold wallet is one that is not connected to the internet, making it a much harder target for hackers because it can only be accessed in the physical. Today, exchanges keep the majority of their customers' money safely tucked away in cold wallets. A cold wallet by definition is a wallet that is designated for receiving transactions, but as rarely as possible or under specific conditions for sending them. If you're an operator of a crypto exchange and you utilize lots of hot wallets, you're acknowledging the risk you have to manage for each of those private keys as mission critical and capital has to be dedicated to protecting those resources. The risk for operating cold wallets as an exchange is much more slow and costly. Accepting and withdrawing funds, trading and other financial products all become more difficult to operate. This is considered a best practice, but it also means the cost of operating any cryptocurrency exchange increases quickly as the business grows. It didn't take long for the next major heist to go down, and this time it was the Bitcoin exchange as the target in March of 2012. This was a much higher profile hack compared to Mt. Gox for several reasons. Firstly, almost a full year of awareness had gone by since the Mt. Gox hack, so there were now a lot more eyes following the Bitcoin and blockchain tech scene. But secondly, the amount of Bitcoin stolen here was more, like a lot more. Bitcoinica was taken for 43,554 Bitcoin. To put this into perspective, at today's Bitcoin price, that haul is worth over $1 billion. Yamahama. 2013 was a pretty quiet year for major exchange hacks with only a couple making the radar and none of them groundbreaking in nature at the time. 2014 though, yeah, that's a different story. In February of 2014, Mt. Gox, yeah, these guys again. Completely blew up as a result of a past hack that had depleted the company's Bitcoin reserves, put a consistently growing pressure on their ability to meet customers' withdrawal demands. The exchange lost, get ready for this, around 850,000 Bitcoin over the course of several years, something that was revealed when an internal company memo was leaked, resulting in the eventual permanent shutdown of the exchange. With over 24,000 customers now unable to access their accounts, this event caused utter chaos in the crypto world, helping facilitate the massive price decline in Bitcoin that followed after. According to a Verizon 2022 breach report, up to 82% of methods of attacks include a direct human element, while up to 50% of these attacks can be attributed to stolen or mismanaged access credentials. That 82% includes misconfiguration of cloud infrastructure, backdoors, and other overlooked human errors. The rest of 2014 was spent dealing with the aftermath of Mt. Gox, and while 2015 did see some hacks take place, nothing really major happened until 2016. And that's because in August of that year, it was the OG exchange Bitfinex that was making headlines for all the wrong reasons. Exploiting a bug in the multi-sig system through Bitfinex's partner BitGo, the thieves were able to fool the BitGo algorithm, which allowed them to withdraw roughly 120,000 Bitcoin from the exchange's hot wallet. Unlike many exchange hacks, which leave customers without any recourse for compensation, Bitfinex's situation actually played out a bit differently. They spread the losses between all users by freezing 36% of funds in each wallet. This was then compensated for by issuing their own exchange token, which they called BFX. These could be redeemed for US dollars at a set rate, or the user could opt in to take shares in the parent company, iFinex. And doing this likely saved the company from complete collapse as the value of the stolen Bitcoin at the time was north of $72 million. Moving on to December of 2017, and we have a small but unique hack. One of the only decentralized exchanges at the time in Ether Delta got hacked for 300 ETH and a slew of altcoins worth several hundred thousand dollars. 
Hackers gained access to the Ether Delta servers, which resulted in customers sending money to the digital thieves, opposed to the exchange. This hack is noteworthy not for the amount of funds stolen, but rather the nature of the situation itself. You see, decentralized exchanges were really new at the time and touted as the solution to all the centralized exchanges issues, which included, wait for it, loss of funds from hacking. With the Ether Delta heist, the crypto world got a stern reminder that DEXs were not immune to hacking, nor were they remotely ready for prime time due to their lack of user friendliness. 2018 kicked off with a bang when Japanese exchange CoinCheck announced that they were the latest victims of magic internet money going poof. And if you thought that Japanese exchanges had a bad reputation to fight off thanks to Mt. Gox, well, it just got a whole lot worse. A total of 532 million NEM tokens were stolen worth roughly around 487 million US dollars. A paltry sum. However, this did mark the end of all the Japanese crypto exchange hacking misery. What was unforgivable though was CoinCheck's leading edge security practices of keeping all of their customers' money in a single hot wallet without any smart contract or multi-sig security applied. This story does have a silver lining though, if you can believe it. The crypto space used this event to begin communicating with each other to help identify and blacklist the hacker's wallet address by labeling it as such. This is a practice that has since gained in popularity and it adds a layer of complexity for thieves who must find reliable and efficient means of moving stolen crypto around while everyone watches on the blockchain. By the summer, the industry had shifted its focus to Bancor, who ended up losing $23.5 million in tokens to thieves on July 9th, mostly in the form of ETH and BNT, the Bancor network token. Bancor got heat from the industry for the freezing of the BNT tokens in the hacker's wallet, and while this meant the hacker could no longer remove the stolen coins from the exchange, it also meant in the eyes of many that the ethos of decentralization had been broken by the very act of freezing coins in the first place. Litecoin creator Charlie Lee chimed in on the now infamous event, heading to Twitter to denounce Bancor's actions directly. Hey, remember when I said we were done with all that Japanese exchange hacking misery? Yeah, I lied. On September 14th, Zaif, a leading Japanese cryptocurrency exchange, got taken for a smattering of Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Mona to the tune of 59 million US dollars. The exchange suspended withdrawals and deposits of the three currencies and notified the authorities of the hack. Now, unlike most thefts of this scale, where customers lose 100% of the money stolen, in the case of Zaif customers, they actually fared much better. Zaif was bought out by Fisco, a publicly listed Japanese investment firm who made all customers whole. So, kind of a happy ending? 2019 saw a number of hacks, so in the interest of time, let's look at one of the most impactful. This one featured Binance who lost $41 million in a heist that saw the hackers use various tactics like phishing and viruses to get numerous two-factor authentication codes and API keys. This led to the hackers withdrawing over 7,000 Bitcoin from Binance's hot wallet. And this high profile act of villainy led to Binance establishing the Seifu, or Safe Asset Fund for Users, which would see Binance allocate 10% of all trading revenue to a cold wallet meant to support future hacking events. Cryptocurrency exchanges can fall victim to phishing attacks like anyone, but spear phishing is a much greater concern. Planned, deceptive, and precise emails are a much larger concern because they can be harder to catch both by automation and trained employees. But as always in security, there is no perfect solution to enabling utility and restricting functionality. New decade, same story. It's around this time the next bull market in crypto begins to form and hackers were ready to cash in on it. We'll start with the decentralized finance or DeFi network Poly, and this is a story for the ages. In August of 2021, a hacker found an exploit which allowed them to drain the network of over $600 million worth of crypto. Understandably, the Poly network went public with this event, begging the hacker to return the stolen funds, which, as we've learned today, never happens. Except this time, it did. The leadership team at Poly was able to establish communication with the hacker, who informed them that he had hacked the network for fun as a way to challenge himself. He pledged to return the funds, and while it took a while to get the plus $600 million in crypto back, it actually happened. That's right, folks, this guy hacked the Poly network for good old shits and giggles. Oh, and guess what else happened? 
Based on the surreal events that took place in the story, the Poly Network offered the hacker a job, who is now known as Mr. White Hat. A year later, it was Bonanza's turn to make the news, and this one dwarfed the previous hack. The intruders were able to find a chink in Bonanza's armor via a hole in the smart contract that controlled the BSC, the Binance Smart Chain Bridge Hub, which is a cross-chain bridge that allows people to move tokens back and forth between different blockchains. The exploit allowed the hackers to withdraw 2 million BNB, Binance's native token, worth around $570 million at the time. Now this stands as one of the largest hacks in crypto history. And finally, the latest heist taking the world by storm is none other than the raging dumpster fire of a mess called FTX. The gory details are in November of 2022, FTX, one of the largest entities in all of crypto, declared bankruptcy. Part of FTX's downfall can be attributed to the fact that they were hacked for $477 million in crypto. On November 11th, FTX noticed a series of high-value, unauthorized transactions taking place, and they quickly moved the remaining funds into cold storage in an effort to prevent any further damage. The hackers then went on to launder the stolen funds through various mixing services, pretty much ending any hope of the funds being returned one day. News came out soon after that the hack was an inside job perpetrated by a disgruntled employee. The sad thing here is that the hack wasn't even the biggest news regarding FTX, as it was later revealed that now disgraced ex-CEO Sam Bankman-Fried had been using customer funds to go ahead and do everything from buying luxury real estate across the world to gambling on risky altcoin plays that eventually went to zero. With so little consequences, inside actors or self-hacks are frequently the result of an entity with a few unrestricted members exploiting trust. As was the case in FTX and others, employees repurposed or used customer funds as they saw fit. At the root of it all was code in the FTX exchange's core that allowed the displayed numbers and the actual volumes and values of assets to be completely separate and different. FTX hacked itself by design to be able to exploit its special relationship with Alameda Research, the entity that acted as a middleman for banking transactions. If you want to know something you can be certain of in life, it's that crypto exchange hacks are going to continue to happen as time goes on. The world of crypto is a lot like the days of pirates when they ruled the shores. If your defenses aren't up, you could find yourself being looted by a band of thieves. The good news is, you don't have to be a victim. Hardware wallets like Trezor and Ledger are great offline solutions for keeping your coins safe. As for exchanges, their history, security practices, and regulatory status are all good areas to read up on before allowing someone you don't really know to hold your money for you. Things like 2FA, two-factor authentication, also help as do strong passwords on everything you use, including email, wallets, and exchange accounts. Always visit an exchange by going to the website directly, opposed to clicking on a link you see in an email, WhatsApp, Telegram, or Discord message. Phishing scams are becoming increasingly more sophisticated to trick unsuspecting users out of their coinage. And finally, if you don't have to, don't leave your coins on an exchange. The saying, not your keys, not your coins, exists for a reason. I hope you enjoyed today's stroll down memory lane. Until next time, have fun and enjoy life, my friends. I'll be back soon with another incredible story to tell you.